Welcome to the Albuquerque Journal's Tech Outlook podcast. CNM is truly one college with infinite possibilities in tech and data sciences. CNM offers programs where everyone can learn about software, apps, or how to build websites. You can also choose from AI programs and machine learning, the Internet of Things, and so much more. CNM, one college, infinite possibilities, and the proud sponsor of the Tech Outlook podcasts. Hi, I'm Ryan Botel with the Albuquerque Journal. Welcome back to Tech Outlook. I'm here with Christy Hughes. Uh, Christy is the does community relations for the Career and Technical Education Center at Hobbs Municipal Schools. Christy, thanks for being here. Hi, thank you, Ryan. I appreciate being here. Can you start? Can you tell us, uh, for those of us who don't know much about that school, but what is uh, the Career and Technical Education Center in Hobbs, and, and what's its history? So uh, our brand new opening uh, in 2022 uh, is a career and technical education center uh, providing uh, for the Permian Basin. Uh, We are a public and privately funded school, part of Hobbs Municipal Schools, um, housing six different pathways for students. Okay. And Hobbs is a big high school. Um, and this, how does this center kind of fit in with the traditional um, high school? So, uh, yes, our high school, Hobbs High, is one of the largest high schools in New Mexico, uh, housing 3,000 students. Uh, we are a single high school town. Um, and so the need was for square footage as well as um, building out workforce for the Permian Basin. And so uh, that's that's what brought the idea idea back in about 2018, 2017, our former uh, superintendent, Mr. T.J. Parks, had a vision uh, for this school, uh, this type of school to um, really, he wanted a school that would promote the uh, CTE, the career and technical education student, um, just as the same as we do for our advanced placement students. And so uh, being recognized within the community. And so he found uh, the need, he, he definitely saw the need and um, gathered the community around him um, through some strategic planning groups, some focus groups, whether that was community members, industry partners, um, parents. Um, and some students to really uh, hone in on uh, making this happen in our community. And, and how did the community embrace the school when um, when it was pitched to the, uh, as the initial concept? I, I really, there was not any um, pushback, really. Uh, and, and one of the reasons uh, we didn't have a pushback is because our community can see that the need of workforce development um, we really need to uh, teach up our, our young ones to uh, become the future of Hobbs. And um, so that was not a hard sell, for sure. Uh, we did go out for a, a bond, a geo bond, for uh, $30 million in 2019 um, to provide uh, $15 million of that to our project and then $15 million to uh, another uh, rebuild of an elementary school in Hobbs. That bond was uh, passed by 86%. One of the highest pass bonds that we have ever had in Lee County. And so um, with that, I feel like our community was very positive um, and has been ever since we opened. Okay, great. And can you just describe the building for us and where it where it is in the community? Absolutely. So um The uh, idea of this uh, career and technical uh, school, um, like I said, had been in the works since 2017. And some of, of the first uh, plans was for us to build that on the New Mexico Junior College campus. Um, and we soon realized, though, that that would uh, be not equitable to our high school students that might need transportation over to that school. Um, so we found um, the land, which is on our in, on our campus uh, right now, which was in the parking lot uh, adjacent to our Watson Stadium, our football stadium. So um, our 86,500 square feet building sets um, on the east side of that parking lot facing Marlin. Marlin Boulevard is a, a furl there 
through um, our community from Texas. So folks from Texas coming into Hobbs, we come on that road, as well as uh, people from Carlsbad. So that um, our school sets right there on the corner. Um, it is a beautiful school uh, with lots of um, open air and lots of uh, windows. Um, the architecture is, is beautiful. It's a two-winged building with a bridge across the middle. Uh, the bridge is... Um, aligned with uh, wide open windows. And so that is one of the prettiest spots on the school is the bridge. Um, but when, when you are driving through Hobbs at night, that school is lit up like a huge beacon. Um, and just another thing about the placement of our school, um, so we don't have the beautiful views of the beach or uh, the mountains outside of our windows. Um, it is landed right in the um, poverty area of Hobbs. And so we like to say that those students at the um, Hobbs apartments, which are across the street, have the view of opportunity. And when they look outside their windows uh, and their doors, they um, see an opportunity that they might have not seen before. So we're grateful to have it placed where it's at. Wow, that's great. What's what's enrollment been like? So we... Uh, started our first year last year. Uh, uh, August 2022 was our first cohort, if you want to say, um, of students. And we had about 975 students. Uh, they come uh, three times during the day uh, from the Hobbs High School. So we have three blocks, um, second and third period, fourth and fifth period, and then sixth and seventh period, first period being our prep for our teachers. And so our students, about 375, 400, would come across um, the Watson Stadium over to SeaTac. Um, and that was last year, 975. Uh, this year we have about 1,100. Um, I would be meant to say um, that because we are a public and privately funded school, we do have capital partners. And our capital partners within this project, one of the um, not stipulations, but one of the requests in our MOU is to have regional students. So we also supply um, education to Tatum, Tatum Schools, Lovington Schools, Unis Schools, and JAL. All of those students are able to attend CTEC at no charge, uh, and they are bused to our school. So that adds about another 75 students that we see throughout the day from our regional schools. Okay, great. And what are the programs that are taught at the school? So we have six different pathways. Those pathways were landed um, with those strategic partner um, and uh, industry partner uh focus groups that we had early on, uh, making sure that we are filling the gaps of work base uh, in our area. And so those six pathways are uh, co construction, and construction consists of carpentry, plumbing, electrical, and HVAC, as well as transportation. And that is um, a really g a gas and diesel engine theory. And then energy, which is our oil and gas pathway, manufacturing, which is welding and machine shop. And then we have IT, and IT is coding, networking, robotics, drones, and digital media. And then we also have our culinary hospitality pathway as well. So in all, six pathways um, with about 1,100 students this year. And you mentioned sort of working in partnership with I industries in establishing this curriculum. Can you just walk us through that? How did CTEC work with uh, employers in the region to kind of to make sure that they were uh, putting, creating a curriculum for that's that um, that is useful in their industries? Absolutely. That's such a great question, Ryan. Um, we have advisory committees um, through each pathway. And uh, for federal and state funding, we do have to have those in the, in the career and technical education world. So we have a, a list of about 150 different um, industry partners that we meet uh, with a primarily twice a year, but there are other times that we meet with them more so. But their role in being part of CTEC is just that, helping our instructors build out the curriculum, build out um, skills that they would need to go straight into the workforce, uh, as well as offering um, work-based learning opportunities and internship opportunities to our students currently while they're in uh, CTEC. 
And the the student would typically start what what year in high school do they transition then from you know the traditional high school to the CTEC program? Right. So. Uh, we do have some offerings uh, that our ninth grade freshmen could attend CTEC, um, but primarily our role of of the school is as a two year school, meaning that um, a sophomore would join uh, and do their intro level one class, and then they would move to a junior, and that would be their level two class. And then we're not there yet; we haven't hit our third year. But those third year uh, seniors would go um, to an internship opportunity. So primarily, it's really a three-year program um, in there, again, with some offerings to freshmen. So basically, the 1,100 or so students right now, the oldest ones are like juniors, and next year would be their senior year, which is going to, they're going to do internships in their field of study. Right, exactly. We do have some seniors now because they started last year when they were a junior. So, and then again, last year we had some seniors that only got the one year of offerings, but uh, we felt like that one year is better than none. Um, there is uh, so much hands-on learning that happens at CTEC that it's unreplaceable, actually. Mm-hmm. Um A couple of things that I would like to mention about those students as well is that they're receiving dual credit um, through each pathway that they are uh, taking. So uh, we offer dual credit, and then they're getting those work-based learning opportunities as well, earning $15 an hour through a grant that we have through PED. Oh, really? That would be their third year that That, they're earning? No, we have students right now that are uh, working, whether that be at a hospitality serving event or we have uh, our construction students at Habitat for Humanity uh, working, building homes, making $15 an hour through Habitat. And we also have uh, students that are at local dealerships and uh, heavy machinery uh, dealerships that are learning uh, hands-on right there with um, their mentor of that industry making $15 an hour through this grant. Okay. Now, what are some of the ways that CTEC incorporates modern technology into its curriculum? Oh, that's great. So, um, everything at CTEC is very high tech, if you will, Mm -hmm. Um, very skilled, uh, high tech equipment. Uh, We felt like that that was super important as we build out each program. And I'm I'm just going to mention for one transportation. So, I give tours at CTEC really uh, every week to different entities, whether that be a school district or a a community uh, partner, but uh, one of the quick questions about our transportation or our automotive is, where's the cars? There's no <laughs> cars in here. Um, and so that is one of those areas that we opted to do trainers. And uh, these are uh, diesel engine trainers, uh, F-350 trainers, uh, Kubota tra- uh, motor trainers. And so what those trainers are is they're just uh, an actual motor uh, without the frame and the chassis. And um, those students are learning uh, through problems solving. And so uh, those are very high tech. We can uh, program them with faults and then the student has to problem solve and figure out what is wrong with the uh, with the engine. Um, and so that's one of those high tech things. The other one um, that comes to mind that's really impressive is our Lincoln Electric vir- or virtual welders. So we have virtual welders upstairs in the classroom. And so these students, uh, they learn on these virtual welders. Um, They can pick uh, where they're welding, whether that be underwater or on a high rise or in a booth. Um, And they're in a safe environment, meaning that they are virtually welding. Uh, they put on the uh, the goggles. They can see it's just like an Oculus. Um, and then uh, their wand vibrates, and through the glass, they uh, spark. And so they're learning how to put their muscles, uh, hold their arm, um, hold their body so that their welding is, is perfect before they go downstairs and spend money uh, welding on all those consumables of metal. So it's twofold. Learning in a safe environment as well as saving some funds on consumables. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've had conversations with parents whose children were contemplating Hobbs High or CTEC. What do you tell them about, you know, what just the uh, high school experience would be um, at CTEC compared to the more traditional high school? 
Absolutely. So all of our students still attend Hobbs High. So those students um, come over to CTEC uh, for those 90-minute, two-hour blocks for their elective classes. They're still attending Hobbs High um, for their core classes. Unless they are a junior or a senior, they do have uh, the opportunity to take English and math um, on the main campus at CTEC. Uh, and those English class is totally different than a literature class on the main campus. Oh, really? It is technical writing of the industry. So those students are learning how to do um, resume building, um, email writing, uh, phone calls, you know, all those things that you need to build out your portfolio to get a job. And so that's what our English class is offering for juniors and seniors. And then our math class is a construction math, surveying math, and the math of the industry. So culinary math. They're learning uh, about measurements and fractions. Um, and so those are offered to our juniors and our seniors. Um, but the other students, uh, sophomores, um, they all walk over from the main campus. So they're still getting that high school experience. They're eating lunch uh, at the main campus. They're just coming over to our school for that two-hour block. Okay, so they still can be part of the football team or Abs- athletics, stuff like yes, that. Yes, yeah. they're... they're football team, the band, all of those things. Yes, they're they're just like any other student, um, but we we have them for two hours out of the day. Mm-hmm. And can you go back earlier? You said how the school was uniquely funded in a public par- private partnership. Can you tell me a little bit more about that and what makes the funding mechanism interesting? I would love to, because I think that that's where um, a lot of folks don't realize what we, what we've done and what we've accomplished throughout these t- uh, years. But um, like I mentioned in 2017, those, those focus groups came about and uh, we realized uh, quickly as a district that we would not be able to accomplish what we wanted to accomplish without our public and and private funders. And so um, we went out for bond. Uh, The bond did pass, like I mentioned. And then we were funded by the city of Hobbs. The city of Hobbs put $10 million into the project. Um, PSP, which is Permian Strategic Partnership, which is 27 major oil and gas companies um, into the PSP. They they also put in $10 million, as well as the JF Maddox Foundation. The JF Maddox Foundation is a family foundation in Hobbs. And they promote education and community throughout Lee County. And so they gave uh $10 million as well. And then uh, the Daniels Fund. The Daniels Fund, Mr. Bill Daniels was from Hobbs. His family was uh, raised in Hobbs in the oil field. And then Mr. Daniels invented uh, tele- uh, cable television. Um, he is no longer with us, but his family foundation um, supplies uh grant money for the four states, the four corner states, we of being one of them, um, they gave us $6.5 million for the project, as well as some Lee County um, con- commissioners uh, gave us uh, some of their con- concessionary money uh, to to provide for about a $51 million project. Um, and and with that, we do have what I, what I call our capital partners, which now is our steering committee, which we meet quarterly with. Um, that steering committee um, really gives us uh, avenues of of involvement within the community, staying on track, that you know, there are our pulse keepers. And so while well, our school looks different because we have the school board uh, traditionally, and then we also have uh, our capital partners that um, kind of steer the way for us. Mm-hmm. And with the fact that the school opened in August of 2022, there really hasn't been that uh, cohort who has started and finished from CTEC. We're still have those students haven't um, come out yet. It must be kind of an exciting time for CTEC to just with the timeline of your students. Yeah, yeah. It, it three years. That was what our our goal was, and and it still is. And um, we have seen such success. Uh, we've uh, we've had some really great things come out of uh, the Innovation Zone grant, as I mentioned earlier, that allows us to uh, provide work based learning for the students. Has been a game changer. It was something that we did not plan on uh, in the very beginning of opening CTEC. We we applied for this grant. Um, we became one of the 
10 pilot schools for this grant. Uh, we didn't know what we were doing, but we just kind of took the bull by its horns and just went for it. That's kind of the the Permian Basin way, if you mm-hmm. will. And um, now we're in our second year of that grant, and uh, we have already used all of our money providing a uh, hands-on learning opportunities outside of the work for our students. And so, uh, so many great things. Um, I will say our ultimate goal with CTEC is if a student wants to go to post-secondary school, absolutely in a trade. Um, But truth be told, our our ultimate goal is to get these students in the workforce and to get them uh, a career uh, that is high paying, high sustainable uh, for their to make them a great life. And that's what we're doing. We we already had seniors last year uh, that were hired on with oil and gas companies making twenty seven dollars an hour um, straight out of high school without Mm -hmm. a without a degree. And so we have great uh, things to be proud of. Yeah. And what, as the school district looks ahead into the future, what would CTEC officials like to see happen in the coming years, just in terms of economic development in the Hobbs and surrounding areas? Well, it's so interesting that you say that. We we have um, a great relationship with our uh, Lee County Economic Development uh, Department, um, Jennifer Grasham. She's the CEO of uh, she brings uh, new companies uh, into Hobbs that are looking to build uh, manufacturing plants. And uh, we just had someone come that was uh, that was building a, a solar farm uh, outside of Hobbs. And to see those new industries come into Hobbs and we have the students with those skills to employ them with those new companies, I, I, I don't know what's any better than that. That's just amazing to me that we can say yes we can help you with your workforce if you build. We we can do that. So I, I don't foresee that being a difficult thing at all. I think that we're just going to continue with the forward process. It, it sort of seems like it's, it's like a carrot type thing, like a, a company, if you're going to open a manufacturing plant uh, and you know there's thousands of students getting trained in manufacturing, um, entering the workforce every year, it might be more appealing to think of the Hobbs area. Yes. And, and, you know, if you've never been to Hobbs, you, you might wonder what in the world, you know, we sit right at the corner, three miles from Texas. And uh, like I mentioned to someone uh, just this weekend, uh, we're closer to uh, Lubbock or Midland, Odessa than we are Albuquerque, but everything is in Albuquerque for us because we're in New Mexico. But um yeah, the opportunities are going to be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you are a, a ways ways down there, um, <laughs> which are. is all the more uh, uh, why we're more uh, all the more glad that you've taken the time to come in and talk with us about C Tech, Christy. Thank you. I really appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much. 